Hello. Today I'm going to be doing a demonstration of explainpaper.com. Explainpaper is a service that uses large language models to explain papers to you. You can ask it questions and highlight text and it will give you explanations of the section you've highlighted. So on their website you can do one of the pre-built demos. So for example looking at this attention is all you need paper and you can highlight a section of text and it will give you a explanation of that and then you can ask it a question and it will answer it for you so I'm going to be looking at a paper I was reading last night that I uploaded to explain paper. So we have here, is encoder decoder redundant for neural machine translation? Um, encoder decoder architecture is widely adopted for sequence to sequence modeling tasks. So let's see what it says here. Uh, so essentially you just restated it, but that's fine. Uh, what is sequence to sequence modeling? Yep, so this looks very good. Um, for machine translation, despite the evolution from long short-term memory networks to transformer networks, Plus the introduction and development of attention mechanisms, encoder-decoder is still the de facto neural network architecture for state-of-the-art models. While the motivation for decoding information from some hidden space is straightforward, the strict separation of encoding and decoding steps into an encoder and decoder in the model architecture is not necessarily a must. Compared to the task of autoregressive language modeling in the target language, machine translation simply has an additional source sentence as context. So, this is kind of the heart of it, so let's see what it says here. And that's going to be seen as, I should include the period. Alright, there we go. The text is saying that machine translation is easier than autoregressive language model because in the train, machine translation has an additional source sentence as context. Um, so this is not really what it's saying. It's saying that um, you can do machine translation as autoregressive language modeling, not that it's easier. Um, so let's ask, what is autoregressive? language modeling. Autoregressive language modeling is a type of statistical language modeling where the next word in a sequence is predicted based on the previous words in the sequence. This is correct. Um, what are some advantages and disadvantages of using auto Aggressive language models for machine translation compared to using an decoder. Some advantages of using autoregressive language models for machine translation include that they're easier to train and can handle longer, longer contexts. However, they may be less accurate than encoder-decoder architectures. <coughs> um, so I don't know if this is really true, but it seems plausible. Um, okay, so let's keep going. Given the fact that neural language models nowadays can already handle rather long context in the target language, it is natural to ask whether simply concatenating the source and target languages and training a language model to do translation would work. Oh, so I think it may be kind of misinterpreting this in this answer. Oh, well, it's gone now. Um, but it was saying that the autoregressive models could handle... An advantage of autoregressive models is that they can handle longer 
context where this is kind of saying that the causation is in reverse, that we can now handle longer context, which now makes um, autoaggressive models more viable. Texas has another word. Um, so this is correct. Um, in this work, we investigate the aforementioned concept for machine translation. Specifically, we experiment with bilingual translation with additional target monolingual data and multilingual tr uh, translation. In all cases, the, this alternative approach performed on par with the baseline encoder-decoder transformer, suggesting that an encoder-decoder architecture might be redundant for neural machine translation. Um, okay, so this has mostly been, been quite good. Um, So let's find some other section. Um, okay, let's look at this. So denoting the source words and subwords as F and the target word subword as E with running indices J in J and I and I respectively. The usual way of approaching the translation problem in the encoder-decoder model is to directly model the posterior pro probability via a discriminator model. This is used in the transformer and can be expressed as... Um, so I don't quite understand what this is saying. The model is usually trained with the... Uh, they're talking about something with the loss function, but... Um, the model is usually trained with the cross-entropy criterion, uh, and the search aims to find the target sentence with the highest prob probability, often approximated with beam search. Okay, so they're talking about the loss function and doing beam search for encoder-decoder models. So what do they say here? The text is discussing how the transformer model, the transformer models the translation problem. The transformer uses a discriminative model to directly model the posterior probabilities. I'm not really sure if this is correct. I don't know. Um, this means that the transformer uses the probabilities of the target word to predict the next word in the sequence. Uh, so I think this is right. Um, the model is trained with the cross-entropy criterion, uh, which is a measure of how well the model predicts the correct target word. Uh, so I think that's correct. The search aims to find the target sentence with the highest probability, which is often approximated with beam search. So I think this is correct, too. I, I think this is probably easier to read than what they were saying. I guess this is maybe a little more formal with the mathematical notation. Um, okay, let's look here. Another important setting where TL, TLM needs to be compared to the baseline encoder-decoder model is where multi, multilingual data is used in training. Um, so what's TLM? Is TLM like what they're describing here of using the autoregressive model? Um, what is M in this context? TLM stands for Transformer Language Model. Oh, that makes total sense. Um, it is an alternative approach to machine translation that does not use an encoder-decoder architecture. Wow, yeah, very good. Um, um, let's see. Okay, that may be a good place to stop, but um, I'm very impressed with this. This is um, both impressive what it's able to do and I think genuinely useful. Um, and you can imagine if this even just gets a bit better, it could become very useful. Um, and in general, over the last year, it's really remarkable how good the language models have gotten at answering difficult technical questions. Um, I think we're essentially to a point where in the next year or so, uh, a language model will be able to take most college level exams and do better than most of the human students. Uh, which is kind of a big deal if you think about it. That's quite a um, quite a benchmark to reach. So it's pretty crazy.